Here we have an example problem, which starts on page 5-12 in the course pack, where basically we're going to use energy balances that we've learned about so far, integrated with a material balance problem in order to solve for the unknown variables. So in this particular problem, we have a distillation column. And the distillation column has a feed coming to it. The feed consists of 100 moles and 65% on a mole basis is, is acetone and 35% on a mole basis is acetic acid. So the feed comes to the distillation column and you have a vapor stream leading, leaving out of the top. That vapor stream is fed to a condenser and all of the, all of the vapor stream is condensed. So you have 100% condensation to liquid. Half of that liquid is then sent back to the distillation column as a reflux, and the other half is sent towards your as your product stream. Now, of course, because this is just a splitter right here, the compositions between these two streams are the same. At the bottom of the distillation column, you have your liquid stream, which is enriched in your heavy product, and that is sent to a reboiler, where you have a uh, the extra heat is being added to the system and it's vaporizing some of your stream here and the rest of it is leaving as your product stream here. <clears throat> now what are the signs of the two heat uh, flows here? QC for the Q condenser and QR for the reboiler. <clears throat> for the condenser the sign should be a minus sign because heat is being removed and for the reboiler the sign should be a plus sign. So it should be positive heat because it's heat being added to the system. So the main question that we want to ask ourselves is how would we solve for Q net, which is the sum between Q condenser and Q reboiler. So in order to do that, we're going to attempt to do a balance on the overall system. So in the overall system, how many unknowns do we have? Well, we have three unknowns. Those three unknowns would be N1, N2 and Q net. Now we're not going to split up QC and QR individually, we're just going to solve for their sum, which is Q net. Now we have two material balances, right? We have acetic acid and we have um, acetone, and then also we have one energy balance. You can only ever write one energy balance. So you can't write an energy balance for acetone and an energy balance for acetic acid. You just get one energy balance. So we have zero degrees of freedom. Now, the two material balances are very simple to write. It's something that we've already written many times before in this class. So you have your total mole balance, 100 moles going in, N1 and N2 coming out, and then you can write a balance on either acetone or acetic acid. This is our acetone balance. Now, for our energy balance, you start out with the um, generalized open energy balance equation, where you have Q minus shaft work equals delta H plus delta EK plus delta EP. Now we're going to neglect a lot of these terms, right? So we neglect shaft work because there are no moving parts. In addition to that, we can neglect both the kinetic energy and the potential energy because for the kinetic energy, we have negligible velocity change. And for the potential energy, we have negligible position change. Negligible. Oops. And so therefore, the reduced balance equation uh, gets reduced down to heat is equal to your change in, ent in enthalpy. Or basically, in particular for this problem, you have Q net is equal to the molar flow rate of all the outlet streams times their individual um, specific enthalpies minus the molar flow rates of all the inlet streams times their individual enthalpies. Now we have the following enthalpy data given in the problem statement. So at different temperatures, which are the relevant temperatures for the problem statement, for both acetone and acetic acid, we have these enthalpies that are given here. So basically, 
to, in order to solve for what Q net is, we're going to have to find out what this delta H is. <clears throat> right here. And plug in all those values. So Q net is equal to the sum of all the outlet states. So let's go ahead and write those out. For the outlet uh, stream, the single, uh, the liquid outlet stream, we have a the liquid uh, mole fraction for acetone, which is 0.155, times the moles of the liquid stream, N2, times this specific enthalpy of acetone in the liquid state at the temperature of the liquid stream, which was 98.7, right? So for acetone, the specific enthalpy of the liquid state at that temperature is right here, 1385. So we will use that. So we'll go ahead and write that number in here. And so that's our contribution from the acetone from in the liquid stream. We also have a contribution from the acetic acid in the liquid stream. So the acetic acid mole fraction is 0.845 times N2 and also its specific enthalpy in the liquid stream at that temperature, 1312. Those, that's the uh, one of the outlet streams. Now the inlet stream, I'm sorry, the other outlet stream is the vapor stream. But you also note that the vapor stream has been condensed. And so the correct place to look for what are the specific enthalpies for those are these points right here in the table. Right, because the condensed vapor stream is at 56.8 degrees C and it's 100% liquid. So the two specific enthalpies for acetone and acetic acid have been chosen to be our reference states for this table. And therefore that particular stream doesn't actually contribute any of the specific enthalpy. And so now we have to subtract off what we have in our inlet states. So if we subtract off your um, moles of acetic acid times its specific enthalpy of the feed stream, and then the moles of acetic acid times its specific enthalpy that's found in the feed stream. And there we have now a third equation. We can use, um, we can solve the first two equations to get N1 and N2. And once we have N1 and N2, calculating Q net is a simple calculation from here. However, there are so many different terms in this equation that we are using to calculate Q net, it's advisable to construct an inlet outlet enthalpy table. So you construct a table with, for the inlet states, which contains both the moles in for each one of your species and the specific enthalpy in for each one of your species and also for the two outlet states, the one that's associated with the condenser and the one that's associated with the reboiler. And those consist of your specific enthalpies for those states and you can see right away that this one contributes nothing now and then here is, and here is your um, outlet, the states of your outlet stream that's coming out of the reboiler. And so now all of the data for your streams are organized into one place. So it's a lot easier to read off of this table what each one of the terms would be in your energy balance equation. Now in the next part of the problem, we're going to calculate QC and QR individually. Now that we have Q net, all we have to do is calculate QC and then we can um, find QR by the difference. So we're gonna start, start by analyzing the condenser. And we can just see by inspection that the material balance for the condenser is completely closed, right? So we have two N1 moles going in and two times N1 moles going out. And we also have the same um, compositions of those two streams as well. So there's nothing more that we can learn from the material balances. The only thing that we have left to do is to write the energy balance for this particular situation. So this energy balance, because there's no shaft work and there's negligible kinetic and potential energy differences, the energy balance for this particular situation ends up being Q equals delta H. Now what we've done here is that we've taken um, our reference table from before and 
are the original reference table and we've put those numbers into this particular table for your enthalpies in this situation. So you have NN, which is 0 0.98 times 2N1 for acetone and 0 0.02 times 2N1 for acetic acid. And we have the, the two enthalpies at those two states as well. In addition to that, we have our N outs and our enthalpy outs, but you notice that as before, we had chosen the reference states for these two compounds to be uh, specifically the liquid state in this stream. And so there's no enthalpy contribution for that particular state. Now what you can do is you can rearrange the um, sum of the enthalpies that we had seen before, which is shown. And because the moles in the two streams of each one of those components is the same, both in and out, then we can rearrange this to be the moles of acetic acid, or sorry, of acetone, times your change in enthalpy across the outlet to inlet of acetone, plus the moles of acetic acid times its change in enthalpy. Right, so basically all we've done is we've factored out moles. And in the end what you get is then the moles of acetone times its change in enthalpy equals the moles of acetic acid times its change in enthalpy. Once we plug, on, plug in all of those numbers, we can calculate the heat load of the condenser and then use what we've already calculated about QNET to get the heat load of the reboiler. Now, if you go back to our original diagram, you'll see that there are several unknown variables that are still there, like N3, N4, and Y4. So we can analyze the reboiler to get the remaining unknown variables. So doing a degree of freedom analysis on the system, we get three unknowns, two material balances, and one energy balance. So we can see that there's zero degrees of freedom here. And note, we can't use Routes law because everything about the, all the in intensive variables are already specified. So Routes law is out the window. So basically we can only use the re these three types of balances in order to solve for the remaining unknown variables. So let's write down some of these equations. For the acetone balance, we have the acetone that comes in, which is Y4 times N4 is equal to the acetone coming out. 0.544N3 plus 0.155N2. We can also write a total balance for this system, which is a very simple N4 equals N2 plus N3. Now finally what we want to do is we want to write, be able to write an energy balance for this system. However, here's the problem. We don't really know how to write the energy balance for this system at this particular time because we don't have any enthalpy data as a function of temperature for, for these particular things. And so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to wait until chapter 8. and to figure out how to finish solving this problem.